This episode of Life Hacker is brought to you by Gamefly. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Hacker's Summer Series. Here's a look at what we're talking about this week. Whitson and Adam are going to walk through how to stream music from your iPhone or Android device to your home theater via your Xbox, PS3, or other DLNA supported device. We'll take a quick look at how Jason cut his power bill by a third with a little help from technology and some common sense. We migrated from Facebook to Google Plus and a lot more. So let's get started. Nowadays, most of us keep our music on our phones and iPods, but we don't necessarily have a way to play that through big speakers. Luckily, there are a few apps for both Android and iOS that will let you stream your music from your phone to your home theater. Getting music from your iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad onto a DLNA-capable device is really easy. You just need to download a handy little app called Air Music, and then you turn it on, and then go to your Xbox 360, PS3, uh, Windows Media Player on your computer, or even some TVs, and you can go and find a device called Air Music dash the name of your iDevice. As you can see, I have mine up here on my Xbox 360. So you just select it, and then you go through your playlist, songs, albums, whatever, select a song that you want to play, hit play, and then it will start playing. It may take a few seconds to get started, but you should be up and streaming in no time. And then you can take a look on your phone, and you'll see it says that you've got your device connected. That's all there is to it. To set up Twonky Media Server, all you need to do is download it from the market, start it up, and it will search your phone automatically for music, videos, and photos to stream. It will show you your entire library, but you don't actually need to access it from the phone. Just start up your Xbox or other DLNA compatible device, find the Twonky Media Server, and start playing your music directly from there. That's all you need to do. This week on Lifehacker, we figured out how to reduce our energy bill by using technology and common sense. Energy bills can be especially rough during the summer, and Jason Chen ran through a myriad of ways to cut them down, from simple things like unplugging electronics when you're not using them and changing to CFL light bulbs, to more sophisticated techniques like isolating your major power hogs and utilizing smart power strips. Next up, Whitson showed off how to migrate your Facebook account to Google+. Unsurprisingly, Facebook has made it difficult to transfer information to the competing social network, but luckily there are a few workarounds. Chrome extension Move Your Photos does exactly what it says, for example, and Firefox's video download helper can grab those flash videos you've uploaded. You can also use a loophole in Yahoo accounts to migrate all your contacts over to Google Plus from Facebook. Getting them to actually use Google Plus is another challenge entirely. Finally, we ran down the five best music streaming services. We've been talking a lot about Spotify lately, but GrooveShark actually won out on our user poll. Each service has its own pluses and minuses, so read over the post and see what fits your needs. Oh, and every Wednesday is Wallpaper Wednesday on Lifehacker, when we show off some of our favorite desktop wallpapers of the week, so stop by and check them out. What is life like as a stomach? Alright, it's time for the downloads of the day. Let's see what we've got. It looks like we've got two downloads for Mac OS X. First up is Secure Home, which turns your Mac into a security alarm for $1 by listening for suspicious noise. Second is Desktop Utility, and it places useful OS X system tasks in your menu bar. This includes things like force emptying the trash, hiding the desktop, and showing the user library, which is really useful in Lion. For Windows, we've got SSD Boost Manager, which makes it easier to deal with the space constraints on your SSD by seamlessly moving files and applications between drives. If you've been looking for a new music player on your iPhone, you'll want to give Panamp a try. It makes playlist creation really simple, and everything is tree-based, so you can easily browse and queue up songs to play without jumping around to different screens. Lastly, we have Boot Manager for Android. If you like dual, triple, or even quadruple booting your computer and would like to do the same on your Android device, Boot Manager makes it possible for you to choose a ROM at startup so you don't have to settle for just one. Hungry? Thirsty? The refreshment stand is open. 
Want to try out the latest games, but don't want to spend money for something you only play once? Then check out Gamefly, the largest online video game rental service that offers you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Plans start at $15.95 per month, and Gamefly members can rent one or four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Plus, if you really like the game, you can simply click Keep It and the game is yours at a discounted price. Best of all, Lifehacker fans can get a 15-day free trial when they go to www.gamefly.com hacker and sign up right now. You'll be supporting the show and get to try out some awesome new games. And now, it's showtime. This week on YouTube, Adam Dotchis ran through how to make any iPhone app AirPlay compatible. AirPlay is Apple's wireless streaming protocol, and it usually requires the developer to bake in special functionality to make it work. Thankfully, you can get around that by playing your media and then locking your phone, tapping the home button, tapping it twice to bring up your iPod controls, and you should now see the AirPlay button on your screen. It only works with audio, though. I'm going to turn this off before my neighbors call the police. Next up, Whitson played around with the latest CyanGen mod for Android and showed off how to eliminate notifications one by one instead of clearing them all at once. Check to see if Cyanogen is available for your phone and if you need help rooting your device, well, we have an always up-to-date guide for just that. Finally, Dot just hopped back into Lion's Den and showed off new resizing features in Apple's latest operating system. Instead of having to drag the bottom right of your window, you can now mouse around any edge and drag handles should appear. And that's about it. You can use them to resize your windows like you normally would. That's it for this week. We will see you next time.